Good morning to you, and thank you for joining us for our program on this Lord's Day morning. I hope that you're doing well, and I would love to extend an invitation to you to join us in services today at Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will come together this morning at 9 o'clock for Bible class, followed by worship at 9.50. We will also gather this evening at 6 o'clock for our evening worship, and then we will gather on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock for our Summer on the Mountain Summer Series. This week, our speaker will be Brother Heath Rhodes. Brother Rhodes is a gospel preacher and serves as a chaplain with the Arkansas National Guard. And we know that he will have a great lesson for us on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock. And we would love for you to come and join us for any or all of these upcoming services. During the years of the Great Depression, a man by the name of W. Oliver Cooper had a little girl that he loved with all of his heart. Well, just two years after she was born, his wife passed away, leaving him to raise this little girl on his own. This precious little girl was the apple of his eye, his pride and joy. But then she passed away as well. For years following this, Mr. Cooper was angry and held great bitterness in his heart toward God. One day, nearly at the end of his rope, he threw himself on his bed and in his heart, not wanting to live, he cried out, God, it's just not worth it. Suddenly, something came over him and he was reminded that one day all of the struggles of this life will be worth it. And with those thoughts in mind, he wrote the following poem. Often I'm hindered on my way, burdened so heavy I almost fall. Then I hear Jesus sweetly say, Heaven will surely be worth it all. Many the trials, toils, and tears, Many a heartache may hear a pall, But the dear Lord so truly says, Heaven will surely be worth it all. Toiling and pain I will endure, Till I shall hear the death angel call. Jesus has promised, and I'm sure, Heaven will surely be worth it all. Heaven will surely be worth it all, worth all the sorrows that here befall. After this life, with all its strife, heaven will surely be worth it all. Friends, as we journey through this life, we are constantly faced with times of distress and difficulty and doubt and despair. And we will be as long as we live. But if we are children of God, we have this enduring hope that these days will come to an end. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. The day is coming, and maybe soon will be, that God's children will go to their eternal home. And it won't be until then that we realize how true the words of Mr. Cooper's song really are. Heaven will surely be worth it all. But what is heaven like? Jesus said in John 14, verses 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friends, heaven is our future home. It is a special place where we will be safe, a place where we will be accepted, a place of rest, a place where the problems we experience in this life now will not exist. Heaven, according to Jesus, is the eternal home of the soul. We read in Revelation 21, verses 3 through 4, And I heard a loud voice from from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and their God. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no pain, for the former things have passed away. John says that in heaven we will live in the very presence of God and will see his face, and that God will live among his people. God will wipe away our tears, will take away our sorrow, which we uh, shed here in this life. For all of those things that produce sorrow will be gone forever. You know, it may be that today you're living with a broken heart or you're discouraged, depressed, worn out, or are feeling defeated and tired and frustrated. Maybe you're struggling with the pains of uh, of a relationship that has gone bad or a job loss, or maybe you've lost a loved one. 
no one should ever reach the point where they cry out like Cooper did that it is just not worth it. Heaven will surely be worth it all for friends. There will be no tears in heaven. The things that we struggle with in this life, they are all going to be passed away. John also says that in heaven there will be no more death. Think about that, a place with no cemetery, no tombstones, no funeral homes, a place where no one ever dies, where the word goodbye will never be spoken. But also Paul tells us that in heaven we're going to have a new body. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 through 53, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed, and it will happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life for, to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. And then we read in Second Corinthians 5, Verses 1 through 4, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and we leave this earthly body, we will have a house from heaven, an eternal body, made for us by God himself, and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. When we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and we sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Friends, we've all seen people suffer and hurt and endure pain in their body that we can only imagine. But remember in heaven, there will be no suffering of any kind. In heaven, our bodies will never hurt again because God will remove all the pain and sickness for all of eternity. As Paul wrote in Romans 8 and verse 18, yet whatever we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will give to us later. In heaven, no one will get hurt. There will be no abortion clinics, no jails, no missing children, no killings, no wars, no unemployment, no taxes, no bills, no hospitals, no pollution. Nobody will ever go hungry and absolutely nothing will ever grow old. This sounds so wonderful. A place that fire cannot destroy, that floods cannot wash away. A place where the doors are never locked because there's no evil person there. In heaven, friends, we will know only happiness because the things of this life that have caused us sorrow will no longer exist. In heaven, we will finally be able to rest as we read in Revelation 14 and verse 13. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Now many are anxious to know if they will recognize their friends and their loved ones in heaven. Paul, in speaking about the church in Thessalonica, he made the statement in 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 19 and 20, For what is our hope our, or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. Friends, how could they be his reason for rejoicing if he could not recognize and know that they were among the saved? Jesus said in Matthew 8 and verse 11, And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Here we find that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still had their same identities, as well as Moses and Elijah still had their same identities on the Mount of Transfiguration. The Bible says that our names are written down in heaven, Luke 10 and verse 20, and that when we die, we are gathered to our people. And Isaac breathed his last, and he died and was gathered to his people, old and full of days, Genesis 35 and verse 29. Friends, Lazarus was still Lazarus in paradise. Samuel was still Samuel, although he was dead. Jesus called Lazarus by his name when he raised him from the dead. So yes, in heaven we will know each other. We will see our children, our grandchildren. You will know your spouse, but you won't be married to them. You'll see your mom and your dad again. All of those who were faithful Christians in this life. 
you will see them again. We have to remember that in heaven all things that produce sadness has been taken away. All things that produce sadness are gone. Whenever we think about Revelation 21 verses 9 through 27 and we see this wonderful image of heaven John showing us in the most descriptive terminology that he could what heaven is going to be like. It, it boggles the mind to try to comprehend really how beautiful heaven must be. And that's the struggle that John had because he was seeing things that human eyes had never seen before. He was seeing a new creation, a new habitation that Jesus had gone to prepare for us, a place that we yearn to experience and to dwell in for all of eternity, that place known as heaven. And then we read in Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5, Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the street. On each side of the river, grew a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night there. No need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Friends, for sure, there is a wonderful experience waiting for every person who is a child of God. You may have done and seen everything that there is on this planet, but this will all be nothing when you set your feet on the street of gold in the paradise of God called heaven. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, he said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But the question that often arises is how many of you really want to go to heaven? Well, I'm sure that each and every person that's listening to this lesson today would say, Yes. I want to go to heaven. In fact, a majority of people in society today would say that they want to go to heaven. But how many are willing to pay the cost? So many people say that they want to see God. They want to hear him say, well done. But they're not willing to do what is necessary to get to that point. Well, friends, if you want to hear God say, well done, then you need to become a child of God. You need to remain faithful until death. And I say that because you may go to heaven without good health, without fame, without money, without culture, without popularity, without friends, and without a thousand other things. But you will never go to heaven without a relationship with Christ Jesus. John 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Heaven is the place where God is. It is a place where God's will is done by those who did God's will here on earth. It is a place where everyone wants to go, but not everyone will be there. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, Not everyone who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And Jesus also would say in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and few there be who find it. Friends, today I'm asking you to consider your ways and your life. 
Are you on the broad path that is leading to destruction? Or are you on the narrow path that is leading to salvation, life, and to heaven? Have you thought about where you will spend eternity? Have you thought about your soul? Friends, we encourage you to consider these things today. And have a blessed Lord's Day.